All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we made this really basic uh, Webpack config, just simply made a bundle of app.js, put it in our distribution folder. Um, so now what we're gonna do this time is we're going to go a little bit more in depth into entry and output. Um, a lot of people kind of like glaze over entry and output because um, it seems like such a simple thing. But um, entry and output is really important to set up, especially for in the future, if we're thinking about multiple bundles and things like that, which is you know, something you do want to think about because it's one of the advantages to using Webpack. Uh, so the first thing, I just want to add another file here just so we can understand here what I mean when I say multiple bundles, right? So I'm going to make a new directory, um, source, um, and this be like about or something, okay? And in about, we're going to make a, um, a about.js file. Okay, so in here, um, we're gonna do the same thing just to show us so about me, okay? And what I wanna illustrate to you is that, okay, in this situation, we're not requiring one into the other, but we actually want two separate bundles from two separate entry points, okay? Um, so again, imagine that this, these individual folders are much larger applications and several files and things like that, okay? Um, so. Basically, we want to, um, in the last video, I had it set up so that uh, entry looked like this, right? Um, but in this video, we wanted to switch it to an object like I was mentioning before. And so what this allows us to do is this object can have any number of keys where the, uh, the key is the file name that Webpack will use, and the path is to the bundle, okay? So in however many bundles you have, you're gonna make that many points. So let's add one for about. So I'm gonna call, uh, give it a key of about, right? And the value will just be something like this up here, okay? Except instead of app, we're gonna make this about, okay? Now this will work. Um, let's go ahead and, well, actually real quick before that, and this is actually very important. So um, you can imagine that if I have two entry points now, I'm going to be getting um, two uh, bundles, right? So if they both had a file name of bundle, that would not be good. <laughs> so what Webpack gives you is a couple things you can use. What we're gonna be using is name. So if I put brackets in name, it will replace uh, name with the key of the bundle. So uh, the file name over here has nothing to do with how Webpack names the bundle. Um, you just need to make sure that you match this up, of course, with the path. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So what this will do is say app.bundle.js about.bundle.js. Okay, so I'm going to save that there. Um, we do get other things like hash, oops, inside the bracket and chunk hash. Um, we're not going to use those. Um, we're going to be doing hashing later when we use the Webpack HTML plugin. Okay. Um, okay, so that should be good. So let's just run Webpack here. All right. So you see it built that. So it tells you right here about.bundle.js, app.bundle.js. Okay. If we look in our distribution folder now, it's going to say, it's going to have these two separate bundles. So if I come in here, um, and I just um, duplicate, oops, I duplicate that. And now I can say about.bundle.js and app.bundle.js, okay? So now if I save that and I refresh this page here, see the first alert says about me, second says I love Webpack a lot, right? Okay, so perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, one last thing I wanted to add here is the context. So what Webpack has here is um, this value called context. And basically what this takes is a path, <laughs> surprise. Um, so we take this here. And what this is basically gonna do, if you notice that the app and about both share the same entry directory, right? The, it's the uh, directory, the directory of the config and then source directory, right? So that's kind of annoying to have to type out every time. So what we can do, especially if we're gonna add more bundles, right? 
we can just set that to the value of um, context, okay? And then in here, we can just write out the path. So we're just gonna do uh, like that, okay? So this path is relative to the context. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're just gonna come out here. Um, oops, no, not don't need that. Okay, so we're gonna do dot slash about and slash about.js and okay so you see i have now set a context because we know that every bundle we're going to be using will be in the source directory okay and then from there we just say okay app app.js okay so in the red pack so see we built the bundles no problem and actually just to illustrate that it's working Okay, save that in there. I will run the bundle again. Refresh. Okay, about me. I love Webpack a lot, really. Okay, so we got that working. Um, so you see, so now we've set ourselves up, right, to you create any amount of bundles, right, whether these are page specific bundles or whether they are um, maybe we have a vendor library bundle where we're just bundling like dependencies and things like that okay so this is this in and of itself is pretty great so like now i can come in here into app.js right and i can make a new file and we'll say alert or we'll we'll just um do like here variable um string is equal to this is a string and we can say module Oops, module.exports is equal to string, okay? And we're gonna save that as string.js, okay? In here, okay? So I got string.js is exporting this variable here. So now in app.js, we can say variable string is equal to require um, and again, this, so when you require things in Webpack, by the way, it's all relative to the file that you're writing in. So, um, I would simply just say dot slash string. Okay. Um, in this case, and we'll get into this later, I don't need to put dot JS because Webpack is looking for, is resolving JS files uh, by default. So, uh, so in other words, like I don't have to write that because it knows to look for that. Okay, so instead of um, writing this in here, I can say string. Okay, let's build that bundle again with the webpack command. If I refresh the page, you get about me, and I get this is a string. Cool. All right. So in the next uh, in the next section, we're going to talk about uh, making npm scripts um, to run the webpack command because I realized that I told you not to globally install it in the first video, um, so you might not have been using it, or maybe you did. Uh, globally install it and you've just been running the command but we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to set up the command so that you can run them using npm from your local webpack dependency okay